Welcome loved ones. Welcome new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for all your support subscribers for liking, sharing our videos, following us, our page. And you can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I appreciate you and I appreciate your support. Kisses, XOs to all of you. Light and love. Today, I said I would come here and I would do a book. I would do a book review on a secret little book on altars. Uh, and I'm looking up, you know, you guys, I'm working really close with the ancestors. I'm getting ready to expand my altar and doing other things with my altar because the more I work with them, so many things are becoming open to me. And so I have a book on hoodoo shrines and altars by Phoenix. What's her name? Miss Phoenix LaFay. All right. The book is not even 100 pages. Again, maybe 96 pages. Uh, let me see the sections. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe six chapters. It's not even that big. Um, the, the same people that wrote Hoodoo Bible has something to do with this because I saw a lot of those rituals in this but I talk about that in this book this book is really good because it talks about different altars that you can erect such as saint altars love altars altars just for spiritual work altars for healing altars for hospital healing uh, just different stuff you know, and then it talks about shrines. Um, I like this book. I really did. However, what I didn't like about this book is that I saw a lot of repetitive rituals that was in the Hoodoo Bible book in this book. And that's what I didn't like about it because my main purpose for buying this book was to learn more about ancient, uh, about uh, ancestral rituals and ancestor altars. So I was wanting to know more rituals about working with altars. And I just didn't get, you know, I didn't get enough definite, enough ritual, altar ritual information that I wanted in this book. I had little hints of it. Because, you know, back back in this era, I know they had to hide a lot of their rituals and the things that they're doing. So I had little hints of it because they talk about robes in here and how they wear different robes. The channel in different energy. A uh, little hints of it uh, about the uh, altar cloths, about what type of altar cloths you should use on your altar. So I saw a little hints of it, but far as a full ritual for each altar that you erect... I didn't see that. And that was my drawback with this book. But far as what really interests me was the uh, ancestral altar. I was really moved by the fact that I can make it bigger and I can do other stuff with it. However, uh, I was really interested in the love altar as well is healing my, my relationships bringing more love in my life that really interested me and the healing altar which because you guys know I'm doing a lot of healing so those altars really interested they really interest me and I'm really thinking about erecting those two altars in my home like, I have enough altars as it is, but I think I need to change up some things. The ancestors have been pushing me to change up some things. So, I am going to change up some things when it comes to my altars. I've really been talking to my spirit guides and ancestors about, you know, what kind of altar should I erect and what kind of energy do I want to work with? So... That's why I thought it was important to read this book. I do recommend it because it talks about the different altars that you can erect and the different ways that you can use an altar. However, it doesn't go into different, you know, just getting in depth with the, the various rituals that I was looking for to empower your altar. 
But they do say that they're going to your altar and kneeling to your altar and praying in front of your altar, talking to your altar. It gives it power. So they give you hints of rituals that they're doing, but they don't go into detail. That that you can see it in this book. That was one of my drawbacks with the book because it wasn't being open about the rituals. And I can understand because during this time when candle magic and hoodoo was alive, it was a very secretive practice. So I can understand why they hid a lot of things. However, it is my opinion and my opinion only, this is only my opinion, that this book really needs to be revised to other people's experiences and rituals that has helped them on working their altar. So that's how I feel about this book. I do recommend it. And they seem to be published by this year one day. Because you guys know I did, you know, I think the Hoodoo Bible and those things were were uh, under this year one day. I forgot her name. I did some book reviews on her. Your one day, I forgot her last name. But they seem to be published by the same publisher. The, the same publisher. Their books are always short, maybe about ninety pages. But it's some really good information in there, just not as detailed about ritual. There's no ritual details in here, and most of the ritual details I've seen in the Hoodoo Bible. So that was my drawback with the book. I can try to find something to read in here. Let me read this one. Because you know, guys know this is page 66. So this is just a random page I'm choosing. Creating an altar. It says making an offering to spirit. Creating an altar for an ancestor, Catholic saint, deity, or other spirit is the first step toward the work that you will do with those entities. Once you have an altar established, you can begin to develop an ongoing relationship with these spirits. It is important that you continue to interact with the spirit at your altar, leaving offerings and spending time with the entities whom you have called upon. Spending time at your altar doesn't have to have a specific set of actions to it. And there isn't one ritual, activity, or initiation that you need to know about your altar to be effective. Oh, wow. Just keep in mind that you have invited a spiritual being into your life and into your home. Treat that spirit like you would any corporal person. Don't ignore the spirit being's energy and don't forget it is there. Treat non-physical entities with proper behavior and expect the same from them. Honor them by taking time with them. The more you sit with your altar, the more you will begin to hear and understand messages that these entities may be sending to you. So I'm experiencing that too. The more I sit at my altar and talk, however, you know, I'm looking for ritual. And I just wanted a, more of those rituals to be shared. So they're, you know, they're saying that there's no specific ritual. But I like to hear other people rituals that it would give me ideas on what type of rituals I need to create to connect on a deeper level with my altar. So that's why ritual was so important to me. So how do you plan on working at this space? Are you setting visual candles? Are you burning incense? Are you doing anything with magnetic sand, lotus stone, magnets, or pow powders? Lotus stones are very, very popular in hoodoo, working with hoodoo energy or working at hoodoo system. That is very, very popular because it's all about attraction too. 
Are you sitting in meditation? Are you reciting prayers and psalms? Are you calling out the names of your ancestors? Are you laying out plates of food, glasses of water, wine, liquor, and other libations? Remember that every time you light a candle, every time you ignite some incense, every time you set down a glass of water, you are helping to feed the entity that you have invited into your home. Take these steps seriously and give the spirit the attention and reverence that it that it and any entities whose alliance you seek deserves. In addition to burning candles or lamps, you can also include such offers as small dish of Kanaga water, Florida water, whiskey, or drink or your ancestor or the spirit's favors. A cigar, a cigarette, a pinch of chewing tobacco, snuff can be offered as well as fa favored candles, sweets, or flowers. Some saints prefer traditional food offerings such as breads, cakes. Don't allow the food, candles, liquids, or flowers to spoil. If your altar is inviting please and in pleasing to your ancestors, saints, deities, or spirits, then they will be more inclined to visit it, to look up on you favorably, and to aid you when you call on them. So I thought that was a very interesting passage. Like I said, there's no specific rituals or anything in here. Uh, you hear people give hints about what they do, but not like go into details. Okay, they might talk about robes. They do talk about the different altar cloths that draw different powers. So I thought that was unique too. They was talking about different colors of altars are good for drawing in different energy so yeah i do recommend the book if you're thinking about creating an altar and you don't know what kind of altar that you want to create this is a great book for that giving you ideas about that i mean it's uh, the list with altars that you can create is endless in this book and that's what i liked about it too it just went on and on about you know, altars for money, altars for gambling, and then you have a an all-purpose money altar. You know, it just goes on and on. So I, I was very intrigued by by that. Then it goes into uh, altar paraphernalia. Do I recommend the book if you never set up an altar and you want to know more about altars and shrines and you want to make sure that you're doing it right? Yes, I recommend the book. If you're wanting to know more rituals to do on your altar with this book, mm, no, nah, I don't recommend it for that because I was looking for ritual. I'm looking for the strength and con the connection, you know, and that's just my perspective. You know, you might think differently. That's fine, too. But that's what I was looking for. So again, this book is called Hoodoo Shrines and Altars, Sacred Spaces and Conjure and Rework. Not over 96 pages, like like it's like 96 pages. Didn't take me long to read, maybe two days. Uh, you guys know I'm, I'm always reading. So yeah, I recommend the book. I think it's a good book. It has some interesting things in here. So yeah, I recommend the book, but it, it does, it's repetitive. Some of the repetitive stuff that's in the Hulu Bible book, I did a book review, is in this book. And that was the drawback for me. I was like, no, I already know that. Why are they saying this again in this book? So, yeah, that's the only thing I didn't, I didn't like about this book. So, this is a short book review. I knew it wasn't going to be that long because the page, you know, the pages in it, it wasn't a long book and it was kind of repetitive. But I hope this book review was insightful. I hope it inspired you to get the book or just look more into altars and shrines if you're interested in that. And I thank you so much so for supporting our channel and supporting us. So I'll see you soon. You guys know I'm working, so I'm trying to get here as much as I can. So I'll see you soon. Light and love. Namaste. Namaste and may the ancestors be 